So now that we've gone over the basic steps to compile a stock printer firmware, I want to show you guys a bunch of things that we have in our firmware to do different upgrades, whether it be an easy ABL bed leveling sensor or adding on our NeoPix LEDs or just changing your extruder. So we're going to go through and give you guys a little quick tour of all the other options in the firmware. So as you can see here, I have the configuration H file open. Depending on what board you have, there may or may not be different options, but in general, our configuration layout is going to be the same across all printer boards and manufacturers. So if we scroll down past all the setup for the actual printer model, you'll see we get into our upgrade settings. So we have here on this particular printer, we have different options for our filament sensor kits. We also have options for the stock filament sensor for some Creality machines. You'll also see our ABL probe mounts, and these will vary based on what model you have. And these are mounts that we have already measured and taken the offsets so you don't have to. Meaning you can just tell the printer what mount you're using and it'll auto configure all those settings for you. Now, if you're using a custom probe setup, meaning one that we haven't predefined, we do also have an option called custom probe right here. If we scroll down, you can see there's other specific options for these particular models that this firmware supports. We have settings here for Easy Neo RGB LED lighting kits. And then if we scroll down here, we have advanced settings for our Easy ABL. Certain settings in this section also change different values for different probes. One of those examples being the probe edge. If we keep scrolling down here, this is where you enter in your probe offsets if you're using a custom mount for our Easy ABL. Or if you're using a BL Touch, this will also use that section as well. We have different options for custom extruder setups. So if you've changed your extruder from the stock one and you need to change your steps per millimeter, you can do that here. You can also reverse your motor direction. We have different tweaks for if your filament sensor is mounted or if it's on a direct drive printer to change the length that it loads and unloads. We also have thermistor settings for your hot end and your bed. And then there's a miscellaneous category here where you can change the knob direction if for some reason yours is going the wrong way. Different settings for 5015 fans that might have a whining if they're under 100% speed. We also have a little fun one here that you can give your printer a custom name that will show up on the LCD. We also have other tweaks in most of the configs to change an axis direction. So if you've modified the printer and it's not moving the stock way, you can go ahead and change that here as well. In the section here, we have our community requested features. These are basically bonuses that they're in the firmware, but we do not cover them with our support because they are either fringe use cases or they're more complicated things that are for advanced users. One of those things is the new input shaping. And what input shaping is, is a way to print faster with your existing hardware. We do have a link here if you wanna read up on that. We have what are called your home offset adjustments. So let's say you change your printer's hot end and it's no longer in the factory location, you know, your nozzle moved. You can go ahead and tell it the new settings. So we do have that setting available. We can also enable what's called PID bed temperature regulation, which I don't recommend, but it's there if you wanna use it. We also have a finer adjustment for doing baby stepping on your printer, and that's the live adjustment of your Z-height while it's printing. We also have linear advance, BL touch, and even a manual mesh leveling. So this is if you don't have an auto bed leveling probe and you wanna take manual measurements of different probe points, you can actually do that in software here as well. We have power loss recovery, which is a feature that's built in the Marlin. I'm not personally a huge fan of, but it will continually write to the SD card the position it's at, so if you lose power, it'll resume. This does cause wear on your SD card, so that's one of the reasons we don't recommend using it, but it's there in case you guys do want to use it and go through SD cards. On certain options where you have to enter in a value, you will sometimes have to uncomment another line above that value to get it to take effect. So one of those things, as an example, is the E-steps. So right now you can see this is uncommented because it's lit up a different color but this value will not take effect. In order to get it to actually take the steps per millimeter we enter here on this line, we have to uncomment this line and you'll see it now lights up. So if I were to recompile the firmware and put it on my printer board, it will then take this ESTAB value instead of the one that's pre-programmed for the stock extruder that comes on whatever printer you're flashing. This is also the same way for the thermistor type. So let's say I swapped out my hot end thermistor and I know the value is number five and this is in relation to the Marlin thermistor values, which are located in our help center if you wanna look them up. So let's say I know I'm putting a different thermistor in my hot end and I know it's thermistor value five. I would uncomment both of these lines and then replace this X here with the number thermistor that I'm going to be using. 